and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm your host, Nancy Lewis, and today we're going to be talking about mental illness and how it's addressed in Kansas. We're here today with Kansas State Senator Steve Fitzgerald. Thank you for being with us. Well, thank you so much for having me, Nancy. I always appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. And here we're here today in the World War I Museum, which you can see behind us. So, so I know that your district includes the uh, Lansing Correctional Facility, right? That's correct. And, and I know that in the past you said the increasing number of those in prison with mental illness stems from a lack of communi community-based treatment. Is that still the case? Uh, oh yes, this yeah. is going to be, uh, this is not an easy problem to fix. And my primary interest in this is because I chair the subcommittee that oversees the uh, corrections and juvenile justice budget. And uh, I'm struck that we've got 36% of Kansas inmates are diagnosable. Uh, in talking to the uh, sheriff of Wyandotte County, he says 40% of his prisoners mm. are, are clearly diagnosable. Um, and 41%, I just found this out the other day, 41% of parolees who are returned to prison for technical violations of their parole are diagnosable. So what we have is a, um, a terrible misallocation of resources. We have the police the emergency rooms, the courts, the jails, the prisons, all addressing mental illness rather than addressing mental illness with the appropriate resources. And a lot of these people are frequent flyers. By that I mean they constantly go around. I mean they're, they're, they're let out of jail or let out of prison and they're re-offend back in again because they're not being, their mental illness is not being addressed properly. So I'm guessing it's much like any kind of health care that actually the less expensive way of addressing it is on the front end and, and being preventative and the more expensive way of addressing it is addressing the outcome that happens if you don't uh, address it on the front end. Uh, I don't know the exact figures on that. Uh, intuitively that seems correct. Uh, I know that all of the states had much better mental uh, health care uh, available in terms of resources allocated to it. And all the states, as far as I know, uh, about 20 years ago, closed their hospitals, downsized a lot, and basically put the people under the bridge, gave them some medications, told them to go, and what we see is what we've got today. Um, it may be more expensive to do it correctly than to do it incorrectly like we're doing now, but we're wasting the resources of the police, the mm -hmm. courts, the hospitals are seeing a lot in the emergency room, which is basically mental illness or people in crisis. And uh, the governor has a uh, behavioral uh, panel that's working on this now, and they're finding some solutions that we're going to get to, I believe. One of the things that is being done in Johnson and Wyandotte County is we have RSI, which is a stabilization center, open 24-7. The police can bring somebody there, turn them over, get back on the road and then they take it from there and help people to stabilize and they triage them to see if what they need uh, in, in terms of taking care of the crisis. It's a great, great thing. It's, uh, it's working very well, mm -hmm. but it's resource intensive, needs more resources, and we need to replicate that elsewhere. So it sounds like you would like it to come full circle where we're actually getting back into spending more money at the community level rather than spending money on the other end. Well, I think we need to spend more money on the community level. I think we, spend, we need to spend more money at the state level. I think the state hospitals as well, because mm -hmm. what we have is uh, judges are seeing that people should be uh, committed, but when they commit them, they're only there for 45 days or less because the, there isn't the bed space. It's a good message. Wish we had more time to talk about it. Me too. Thanks a lot. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. We'll see you next time on Newsmakers.